AI agents have a data problem. Every AI agent needs data, information, context, whatever you want to call it, to be able to function properly. So the important task is figuring out how you get that data. Now, there are multiple ways that you can collect it. There's downloading structured data off the internet, collecting it yourself through various manual methods, or you can scrape the internet, which has its own set of challenges. And today, we're going to solve them. Web scraping is the process of programmatically accessing a website and extracting specific data from it. It's an automated process that allows us to gather information at scale without manually visiting each web page. You can start web scraping pretty quickly using a simple Python script like this one, which uses Playwright to connect to a web page via a browser and then find specific elements on the web page that you are looking for. This simple script will work if you're only scraping a basic website not very often, but as soon as you start to scrape more complicated websites on a more industrial scale, some challenges start to appear. We start to hit rate limits set by sites to prevent us from accessing a specific site too often because it thinks that we're a bot. We could run into geo restrictions where the website simply doesn't allow visitors or restricts access to specific content for users from your region. And things like captures can prevent us from accessing content unless we prove that we are human, which in this case, we are not. As you can imagine, these are not minor issues. And if you do run into them, it's going to either stop you from accessing content on the web as quickly as you want to, or it's going to stop you accessing content completely. So how do you get around it? Well, there are several powerful tools and techniques that we can use to overcome these web scraping challenges. Let's look at the main solutions. First, proxy networks. These act as intermediaries between your scraper and the target website. By rotating through different IP addresses, you can avoid rate limiting because the website that you're interacting with sees the request as completely unrelated. And using residential IP addresses from different countries help to bypass geo restrictions. Here's an example to explain how it works. Imagine that Dave is trying to say something to Bob. If Dave talks directly to Bob, he's going to know that Dave is the person who is communicating with him. But if Dave gets Sarah to talk to Bob on his behalf, well, then Bob has no idea who Dave is. That's effectively how a proxy works. Dave could then get multiple people to say things to Bob and Bob would have no idea that Dave is behind all of these messages. Pretty smart, right? And for solving the capture problem, we have the pretty self-explanatory capture handling services. These are automated services that can solve captures in real time to allow continuous data collection without any manual intervention. If you can implement these solutions, they are very powerful, but implementing them requires robust infrastructure and careful management. So this is where specialized web scraping platforms come into play. Platforms like Bright Data, the sponsor of today's video. Bright Data runs a fully managed proxy network, which means that you don't need to spend any time or any money managing and rotating your own IP addresses to avoid getting blocked by third parties. So in the Dave and Bob scenario, picture Bright Data as being a service which organizes all of the people who are going to send messages to Bob without Dave having to worry about managing all of those people. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can scrape websites using Bright Data. The first is a more manual approach, and then the second is going to show you how you can do it using AI agents. First, you can use the agent browser. Bright Data's agent browser enables you to instantly access, interact with, and scrape websites through a cloud-hosted browser that is connected to their proxy network. Let's go back to the simple web scraping script that I showed you earlier. So currently it spins up a local instance of Chromium, opens a new tab, navigates to the target URL, and then scrapes the newest posts on the page. To add Bright Data's agent browser to this script, all you need to do is add your agent browser credentials and then change the browser launch to instead connect over CDP. You can find and set these up inside of your Bright Data dashboard. So in a few seconds, you've gone from a locally hosted web scraping script to a cloud hosted agent browser that has access to all of these features. Now, one of the really great things about Puppeteer and the Bright Data agent browser is that they support interactions within the browser. This really comes in handy if you need to interact with a web page before scraping it, maybe tie some pop-ups or accept terms and conditions, or even automate certain tasks within the browser. Now this brings me smoothly onto AI agents and how they can interact with websites to scrape data and perform tasks. Let's imagine that you have an AI agent that needs information on a given topic. You could build a web scraper tool for the agent that scrapes the specific websites that contain the relevant information that your agent needs. But then you'd have to do that for each of the different websites that you're working with, and that wouldn't be very agentic. So instead of building a tool that scrapes a website by following a defined process, you could go a step deeper and build a set of tools that can search Google, load web pages, click buttons, and interact with forms, and then leave it up to the agent to make decisions on how to use those tools. Tools are what give AI agents their power to do things, 
but they can take a really long time to build. This is where MCP servers come in. You'll be glad to hear that Bright Data has released its own MCP server, which makes it really easy to provide your AI agents with access to web scraping tools while still using the Bright Data proxy network. I'm already using it in my AI assistant project to give my agents access to the internet. And today I'm going to walk you through how you can build your own agent that uses an MCP server. Inside of a new Python project, we're going to install the OpenAI Agents SDK. Inside of a new Python file, you can see here at the top that I'm importing the Agents SDK and a few of its properties. First, we're going to create the agent inside of the run agent function and provide it with the specific instructions to search Google and scrape websites. This specific agent is tasked with finding information about content creators and looking for things like their name, bio, and location. Next, we're going to run the agent and then print the result. Now let's set up the MCP server so that we can pass it to the agent. Inside of the main function, we're going to use the MCP server studio class to initialize our MCP server. We're going to give it a name and then pass the relevant arguments to connect to the bright data MCP server. We also need to provide it with a few environment variables. Your API token, which can be found inside of your user settings, your web unlocker zone, which can be found inside of your control panel, and your browser authentication credentials, which is essentially the same string that you use to connect to the agent browser, but just the username and password. Once it's initialized, we can run the agent. I'm also going to add in a trace using OpenAI's agents SDK so that we can preview the steps that the agent is taking. With the code finalized, we can now run the Python file. So here we can see that the agent is working on the task using the tools provided by the MCP server. And if we look at the command line here, we can see some printed out results containing some scraped information about me. Yes, that's the correct name, that is the correct bio, and that is indeed the city where I live. So that is how you give AI agents access to data on the web. I am going to leave a link in the description for the Gitter repository for this code. So if you do want to check it out, you can do. If you enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like down below, hit the subscribe button if you're new, and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. See ya.